Y'all really seem to enjoy the last time we did this. So today, we are once again going to be putting our fate into the hands of the Madden gods. And we are going to do a fantasy draft where the CPU picks my entire starting team. And last time we did this, it resulted in one of the best teams I've ever had by the end of the rebuild. So I'm interested to see if we can have the same success this time or if it'll be much harder. So get a drink, get a snack, get whatever, because this should be a fun one. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop a like. We hit the like goal of a thousand on the last one, I think it was. So I'm going to up it and let's see if we can get to 1500 likes on this video. It sounds stupid, but it really does help out the channel. And it helps me know that y'all are enjoying these videos. And I might even do another one of these, but with a little bit of a twist, a little bit more of an extreme one. So yeah, if we hit 1500 likes, it'll let me know that y'all want to see that. And be sure to subscribe if you like Madden Rebuilds, because that is literally all I do. And I have something special planned for 30k. And last thing, just let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have down below, because it helps me know what y'all want to see. And if I pick your comment, if I use your suggestion, I'll give you a shout out for it. If you care about that i don't know but without further ado let's get into the fantasy draft and let's see what pick the cpu is going to be working with why do i have the worst luck ever with fantasy drafts for a while i was only getting like top two picks and now i only get bottom three picks for some reason this game hates me i also forgot to do snake drafts so hold on maybe we'll have a better pick now i don't know okay well i actually set it to snake draft this time and now let's see what pick we have okay still 21 it's still bad but i mean th that's better so we are gonna simulate this out i hope it's not too similar to the last one but you know we have different picks so let's see what kind of team we get Ooh, uh, okay, <laughs> we we might have a little bit of a rough start here. The CPU only picked a 79 overall team. What are we doing? <laughs> Is that the lowest overall team? I just need to stop talking bad about this game or stuff like this is gonna happen. That is legitimately the lowest overall team. <laughs> Why? Why me? What did I do? Maybe, maybe the CPU did a fun strategy where it picked like super young players that we can develop. I'm sure that's not the case, but that's what I'm hoping for. Oh, wait, did the CPU not pick a center? What? This is the most confusing team I've ever seen. Who was the first pick? Was it CD Lamb? I mean, <laughs> I have legit never seen this. It. <laughs> I didn't know the CPU could just ignore a position. What is this team, dude? It also didn't pick a kicker or punter at all. Okay, we're in for a rough one here. Despite how bad this team is, it's not even young. <laughs> I mean, there are some young pieces but we have Kenny Pickett as our quarterback his hair is doing the the thing the one of the 15 trillion Madden glitches he looked kind of cool in a Bucks uniform hopefully that doesn't happen for the Buccaneers sake but what was the strategy with this team let's just not pick good players was that the strategy I don't know I legit don't know also I don't know what this scheme is we're like a we're like a 3-4 but we also have George Karloftis Alex Wright and Samson Ebukam on the D-line so that's cool. <laughs> Maybe I just got lucky with the last team. Maybe that's what it is. All right. Well, like I said, we are going to have our work cut out for us in this one. We are going to need an entirely new offensive line other than maybe Braxton Jones and maybe Kevin Dotson. Actually, we're going to need a new tight end, probably a new QB, an entirely new D line because the CPU only picked like two borderline starting caliber D linemen. The others are Samson Ebukam and George Karloftis. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'll I, I guess I'll show me doing this. Let's see if there's a center like at all. Who who's gonna be our center? <laughs> uh, Ryan Bates. Do you want to be our center? Evan Brown. Evan Brown's at least a scheme. Let's go with Evan Brown. Sure. And D line is like picked clean. I guess another Seahawk and Mike Morris. Sure. What a team this is. Our kicker is gonna be Harrison Butker. Apparently no kickers got picked at all. And our punter is gonna be the actual Bucks punter Jake Camarda. And you know what? For our troubles, let's pick up Kyle Uzcheck. No. Nobody picked him for some reason. He's already maybe good enough to start for us at tight end if I feel like it. I don't know. But anyways, let's get into this rebuild. I'm really interested to see how bad this team is going to do year one. Maybe it'll surprise me. I don't know. But let's get to the midseason point. I'll rearrange everything and we will see what our record is. All right. Well, at the midseason point, we are somehow four and two. I don't know how. And it just furthers my theory that the lower overall team you have, the better you do for some reason. Because we 
we literally have the worst roster in the NFL. Our offense is doing really well. Our defense, not so much, but our defense is higher overall than our offense, so I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Who are we going to have to re-sign already? Probably all of our good players. Uh, Bobby O'Karaki, Razul Douglas, George Karloftis. Yeah, pretty much. Not all of them yet, but a few. We'll offer Bobby O'Karaki four years, 47 mil, and he does not take it. Okay. <laughs> Razul Douglas, three years, 38 mil. He re-signs. George Karloftis isn't even a starter, but he's not that expensive. Six years, 42 mil. He re-signs. And I guess we'll re-sign Cameron Mitchell because he's young. That's a long deal and not a lot of money. Five years, 14 mil. He takes that for some reason. And I think that's all I'm going to worry about for now. But let's get to the end of the season. I think we're going to finish. Let me try and guess this. We are going to finish 9 and 8 is my guess. Maybe better. Maybe 10 and 7. I'm, I'm going to guess 9 and 8, but maybe 10 and 7. We will see what happens for the rest of the year. Okay, well, I was close. We finish 8 and 9. I mean, definitely not as good as the first half of the year, but that's fine. We have a long ways to go in this rebuild. We got kind of smoked by the Panthers, too, who were only 8 and 9, so that's unlucky. But I'm interested to see what went wrong this year and what we need to improve. Kenny Pickett definitely wasn't great. Ooh, okay. 3,200 yards, only 19 touchdowns and 11 picks isn't, isn't fantastic. Saquon Barkley was good. 1,600 yards, 5.3 per carry, 12 touchdowns, 4 fumbles isn't great. But, I mean, it looks like he kind of carried the offense. C.D. Lamb, only 900 yards, 8 touchdowns. Jahan Dotson, 800 yards seven touchdowns not much outside of those two. Oh, okay oh my our lowest overall lineman juice scruggs played the best by a decent amount i mean kevin dotson was pretty good too but left guard is a lot harder than right guard at least at least in this game uh, braxton jones allowed 17 sacks that's fun bobby okereke led the team in tackles with 118 tackles for or, yeah tackles for loss 13 for joseph day 12 for watts 11 for rashawn gary and Sacks, four and a half from now 91 overall superstar Rashawn Gary. Okay, cool. Uh, two and a half from Sebastian Joseph Day, two for Josie Jewell. Half a sack from BJ Ojulari, zero from Samson Ebukam. All right, that's realistic. <laughs> That's cool. And then interceptions, three for Azul Douglas, two for Josie Jewell, and then one for a few players. MVP goes to Justin Herbert on the Eagles now. Patrick Mahomes is on the Jets. These are some interesting teams here. NFC Offensive Player of the Year also goes to Justin Herbert. The Seahawks got Derrick Henry. Surprisingly, no Saquon up here. And Defensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Donald. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Tank Dell. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jaquan McMillan on the Falcons. We had Cam Young up there at number nine and BJ Ojulari somehow up there at 10 with half of a sack. I guess I can't complain too much because we, you know, shouldn't have been good, but <laughs> our highest overall players were our worst. So I don't know, at least for Rashawn Gary and, you know, the offensive line. But anyways, let's get into the off season and let's see what we can do to fix this team because it needs something, obviously. And in the Super Bowl, the Cowboys beat the Chargers 35 to 24. Didn't the didn't the Cowboys draft Baker Mayfield? <laughs> they did, and he's up to okay. Well, that's a lot of morale, but he actually didn't develop that much. He's only up to a 78. He's just playing with a crazy amount of morale, up to an 85 overall. Their running back is also Rashad Penny. This was the Super Bowl winning team. I mean, their defense looks good. <laughs> their best offensive player is Deontay Johnson. Well, I guess they have Christian Derisaw too, but I that's something. That isn't the greatest team I've ever seen. But let's see if we can re-sign the rest of the players that we need to. Okay, well, with Bobby Okereke, I I guess we'll just up the money a little bit and hope he takes it, because it says he's interested. I don't know why he wouldn't actually be interested if it says he's interested, but this game doesn't make sense most of the time. He does take it, though, thankfully. And I guess I'll re-sign some of these younger players just so we have depth. Juice Scruggs I'll re-sign because he did well. I guess I'll re-sign Harrison Butker and <laughs> Jake Camarda, too, just because. So yeah, I'll re-sign some of these guys, and let's get in to free agency. I don't think there's going to be anyone great, but there could be some upgrades. We'll see. All right. Well, we are going to be trading Samson Ebukam to the Cardinals for a third round pick. Maybe that's a little much. Eh, it's a, it's not a very good third round pick anyways, so that's fine. I just, he was bad and we have younger players behind him. So it just made sense to get rid of him. But as for, you know, free agency, the important thing here, it's definitely not great. Almost worse than I expected, just in the fact that there is 
isn't anyone young here except for like kickers and punters. Drew Ogletree, that's that's tough. <laughs> that's unlucky. Tucker Craft is here. He doesn't have any offers. I mean, eh. So, a uh, super exciting free agent class here. We are going for Ricky Stromberg because he's young, cheap, and actually has a dev trait. So, we'll see if we can develop him. I don't know why he has a dev trait. Maybe he doesn't anymore, but he did when I, you know, made my rosters. And as y'all know, the thing that drives me crazy is you can't change dev traits outside of franchise. Something else that drives me crazy is when I say you can't change dev traits outside of franchise and people think I mean in franchise. Like I didn't specifically say outside of franchise. Use your ears. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to get him because the Eagles and Cowboys are both really interested too, but we're also going to go for Byron Young. I know, super interesting, 69 overall, but again, young and cheap. Same with Mike Morris. So let's see if we can sign these three players. The main one I want is Stromberg, but that's the one we probably won't get. All three of them sign, and yep, I called it. Okay, cool. <laughs> awesome. Let's get to the draft. Okay, well, here in the draft, we pick at number 14. The Bears have the number one pick. They just can't escape being bad, I guess, unless that's the Panthers. No, it wouldn't be the Panthers. They were at least okay. But what do we want to do with our pick? I, I think I know what we want to do, but are there any decent players at that position? <laughs> okay, maybe. Oh, this guy looks awful. <laughs> so for this pick, I am between Brian McKinney, who I'm leaning towards because he has elite throw power. He has really good strength. I have seen linemen with worse strength, and that's only second. But who's stronger? Oh, why does it say one's first, one's second if they have the same? Why doesn't it just tie them for first? I don't know. But Brian McKinney, elite throw power, good overall ratings. The only thing that isn't great is his throw on the run. Everything else looks good. And then Max Gordon, I also kind of like. He only has great throw power, but at least it's great. All of his ratings do look really good, though. He could be better. I like the throw power of McKinney more, though. I do like the awareness of Max Gordon and the fact that he is better throw on the run. McKinney has better accuracy, though. I think we are going to go with McKinney. He's 6'6", 230, 22 years old out of Memphis, of all schools. Not fast at all, but he is strong. Yeah, let's go with Brian McKinney out of Memphis. Hidden Dev, thankfully, 94 throw power, 80 strength, 70 speed isn't terrible, 86 excel. 80 strength for a QB is crazy. And we potentially have our QB of the rebuild. And what do we want to do with Kenny Pickett? Well, I think I know what we want to do. Let's trade him away. Oh, the, <laughs> that's a great QB room. We are going to trade Kenny Pickett and a fourth round pick to the Bears for a second round pick. The reason I added the fourth is because that pick from the Bears is almost a first round pick. I mean, that is the first pick pick in the second round, and I can't really justify a first round pick for Kenny Pickett with how he played last year, so anyways, what do I want to do with this pick? Robbie Tucker looks kind of good. We definitely don't need receiver, though. Ooh, okay, there are two really good-looking guards. I'm not going to take either of them yet because we don't really need to. Also, wait, this guy down here looked pretty good. Colby Gallagher, guy, whatever. Eh, the more I look at him, the less he looks good, but he looks decent. Marlon Rich and Marquise Buckner both have 40 bench reps at the Combine, so Oh, they both look really good. They look really similar ratings wise or athletically, I guess. I want to go with a defensive tackle too. The question is which one? I'm scarred from taking defensive tackles because of the last rebuild and what happened in the last season. <laughs> Do I want to make the same mistake twice? Because Larry Moorhead looks similar, but maybe better. He's just not a good run defender. I don't know. We'll wait there too. There are good guys later. Even though I just traded for this pick, I might trade it down. <laughs> we don't really need to take anyone right here. We could go with a tight end if one looks good enough. Jalen Glover looks pretty good. Ooh. I wish I had him scouted more, but everything that is scouted looks really good. A catch in traffic, pass block, spec catch, and deep route. He's not like super strong, but he's really fast. You know what? It's risky because we don't have him scouted very much, but let's go with Jalen Glover out of Ohio State. Shit. <laughs> Normal dev, of, of course. Why wouldn't he have normal dev? And now let's see. Let's go with one of the guards. Oh, well, Marquise Buckner is the only one still available, so that makes my decision easy. He's really good strength. Again, not fully scouted, but a little bit scouted. Lacks discipline, which I don't really think is a good thing for linemen, but let's take him. He does have hidden dev, 92 strength. We'll take that. Quigley? Isn't, wasn't there an actual NFL player named that? I mean, I think there was Ryan Quigley. Maybe that's who I was thinking of. I don't know. There are still good guards available. Trey Kelly looks really nice. I do need 
to go with defensive tackle though. Jadarius Harris. That's kind of a fun name. He looks pretty good. Definitely looks like the best defensive tackle still available. I don't know if he's amazing, but he looks decent. And that's kind of what we need. So let's go with Jadarius Harris out of Miami. No idea if he's going to have a dev trait. What's his injury? A to B. And he has good discipline. So there's a chance. Let's take him. And he does have hidden 98 strength. I mean, I would hope so. What's the combine bench record? It's 51. For some reason, I thought it was 49. But I think this would... He had 46, right? So this would be third all time. I don't know how that's not a 99, but not a lot of things make sense in this game. It's whatever. But I might make one more pick if there's still a good guard available. But I will see y'all at the end of the draft. Okay, well, we actually had a pretty decent draft. We didn't get anyone crazy, but Brian McKinney is a 75 overall. That's better than I thought he would be. I was expecting a 73. I don't know why I expected that because, you know, I, I use better draft classes than I used to, but yeah, McKinney's actually pretty good. Now, will he play well? That's a different story. I am not sure. He he has kind of good traits. He has throw away, which is cool, but he has trigger happy sense of pressure. That's not great. Conservative decision maker. I don't think that's great. Undisciplined penalty tendency. I don't think that's great. So those aren't the best traits in the world, but at least he has a dev trait. We'll see what happens. Jalen Glover. I was kind of like scared when I saw that he, that he had normal, but that's just kind of unlucky. He is a good overall. He's a 76. He has 88 speed, 91 excel. Pretty good spec catch. His ratings aren't the best. An A deep route was only a 66. I mean, that's pretty good for a tight end, but I was expecting a little better. He's good though. And then Marquise Buckner is a 74. Obviously he, he has hidden dev. I think we'll play either him or probably Kelly at left guard and then move Scruggs into center. Or maybe I'll put Kelly at tackle. We do need a tackle. I forgot about that because we have Kevin Dotson. We don't have a right tackle. The CPU put Kevin Dotson at right tackle because we didn't have any tackles on the roster, but also we didn't have any other guards on the roster. So I don't know why it didn't just leave him at guard. And that threw me off, making me think we needed like, you know, two guards, but we actually needed a tackle and a guard. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We'll, we'll see which one of these two is the higher overall tackle. And then Jadarius Harris is a 74 overall with hidden dev. He's pretty good. Absolutely zero pass rush to his game, but that's fine. And then the CPU did not pick a very good player here, but Calvin Young in the seventh round is decent. 70 overall, no dev trait. So yeah, pretty good draft. And let's get in to year number two. But here's a look at the team heading into year two. And we, <laughs> this team is very different from last year. I mean, new QB, almost an, well, I guess not entirely new offensive line, but we added two new ones and, you know, shifted some positions around new tight end. The defense is almost identical to what it was. We just have Byron Young and Jadarius Harris at defensive tackle. I think everything else is the same though. We were an 83 overall at 1.2. Maybe, <laughs> maybe like morale wore off or something. I don't know what else could have happened. Sometimes it also just does that for some reason. It'll say you're higher overall than you are, which is fun. But anyways, let's get to the midseason point of year two. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think we're going to do great this year, but hopefully we have some good dev traits. We will see. Okay, well, at the midseason point <laughs> of year number two, yeah, I, as I expected, we are 0-6. It's always predictable what's going to happen in simulation. The team gets much better and we play much worse for what whatever reason. I don't know. Our defense is awful. We're allowing 29 points per game. What? All right, well, that's... It's a little bit of a problem. We have a good pass D and our run D is... I guess it's not the worst. It's number 31, but our red zone defense must be something special. Or we have zero takeaways. That too. And we have three total sacks. Rashawn Gary has one sack. BJ Ojulari has half of a sack. I love this game. All right. I think this is just a Madden diff. So I'm just not going to mess with anything here. I'm not going to change the playbooks yet. Next year, if we still suck on one side of the ball, that's, that phrasing wasn't great, but you know what I mean? If we're still bad, our offense or defense, if one of them is still bad. We'll definitely change the playbook next year. But we have some players to re-sign. And honestly, how much value can we get for Rashawn Gary? Because uh, he is not playing anywhere near the contract he wants. 
I just punched my desk on accident. That felt great. The Seahawks are projected to have the number one pick. God, if there was a fucking, if there was a fantasy draft for some reason in real life, the Seahawks probably would have the worst draft. They would try to get so fancy and just build the worst roster. They would take someone like, I don't know, they would take Derrick Henry round one or some stupid shit. But we're actually gonna take a one and a two from the Steelers for Rashawn Gary. I was hoping he would play well. He definitely has not, so he's out of here. Jahan Dotson isn't interested. We could upgrade over him. How's Braxton Jones doing this year? Is he better or is he still terrible? Much better, but will he actually play well if we resign him? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Three years, 36 mil, he resigns. Surely that isn't a mistake. Three years, 47 mil for Kevin Dotson, he resigns. And I think I am good after that. Everyone else is meh. Let's trade Josie Jewel away just because, like, we're not going to resign him. What was that dude's last name? Trank. Derek Trenkel. Never seen that one, I don't think. But we're gonna take a fourth round pick for Josie Jewell. And you know what? <laughs> Let's trade Sebastian Joseph Day, too. I don't know if we can get much for him. I'll, I'll take like a fifth or something. Yeah, we're taking a fifth for the Lions, or from the Lions for Sebastian Joseph. So I will refill out the depth chart and everything. You know what? <laughs> Let's trade Zach Ertz, too. Fuck it. I'll only take like a fifth or a sixth for him, because he's probably gonna retire at the end of the year. Eh. I wouldn't really see anyone wanting him, honestly, because he is old older and everyone pretty much has a tight end that's as good and a lot younger, so we won't trade him, never mind. But let's get to the end of the year, now with a much worse team. Maybe that'll make us play better. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, well, in year number two, we finish 5-12. and 12. Still no winning record. This was a terrible team to start with, and it did worse than it even should have this year. We finished with the third worst offense, or fourth worst offense, and fifth worst defense, so that's cool. At least in terms of points scored and points per game allowed. Let's see what went wrong this year. Was it the rookie QB? I hope not. Okay, he wasn't great. He was decent, though. 3,000 yards, which isn't a lot. 23 touchdowns, 11 picks. I miss how this offense used to perform in this game, honestly. It, well, it was a little broken, for sure. Uh, there's a there's a slight chance that McKinney wins rookie of the year. Also, I'm guessing he just has star dev. Let's see. Yeah, that's tough. I could have I could have checked when I was, like, rearranging the depth chart. It just didn't even cross my mind. Whatever. I, I don't know. Saquon Barkley with 1,500 yards, 5 5.5 per carry and 10 touchdowns. He was very good. C.D. Lamb was our leading receiver with 782 yards. Hmm. <laughs> you know, maybe we should uh, get the 94 overall receiver more touches. Maybe that's just me, though. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm gonna switch the offense either way. That was terrible. And, yeah, Braxton Jones got a lot worse. How do you allow 12 sacks when we only pass 450 times? Like, was that the lowest in the NFL? Let me see. No, but it was down there. The Ravens only passed 374 times. I'm I mean, they're a lot more pass heavy than that now. Tyler Huntley is the Seahawks starter. He actually did really well. You know, I guess I would call Tyler Huntley a channel legend because he does usually play well when I give him a chance. I'm guessing Joe Burrow won MV, or well, no, maybe Lamar. One of these two won MVP. Burrow had a much better completion percentage, but both did really well. Anyways, the line was worse than it should have been. Shocker, I know, like that's never happened in a Madden rebuild before. And Bobby Okereke led the team with 124 tackles, tackles for lost 14 for Ojulari, 9 for Jadarius Harris as a rookie, and sacks 3.5 from Bobby Okereke led the team. I think I changed my mind about what I said at the midseason. Fuck this. I, I'm changing the playbooks. We, I'm not dealing with this. I'm going. Oops, that's not where I do that. Uh, I'm going. Chiefs and Rams. And if you don't like that, I, cry about it. I don't care. I don't want to be terrible every year of this rebuild. <laughs> but let's see. Did we get any interceptions or did we finish the year with zero? I think I saw one. I can't remember for sure though. No, we had a few. Did I even, I might have checked interceptions and just zoned out when I was speaking. I do that sometimes. Two for Okereke led the team, and then one for Curl Davis and Drake Thomas. But MVP does go to Lamar. I don't know why I said goo. It goes to Lamar. Joe Burrow at number two. Daniel Jones on the Packers up there. That's something. I feel like the Falcons always get Mac Jones. I don't know why. Or no, maybe maybe it was just me when I did the Falcons. What did I, I did a SEC rebuild. That's where I used Mac Jones on the Falcons. I don't know. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Offensive player of the year goes to Brandon Ayuk on the Eagles. That's uh, interesting. Also Christian McCaffrey on the Eagles. That's fun. Saquon Barkley at number 10. Defensive player of the year goes to Nick Bosa. Joey Bosa at number two. That's something. We got the racism boys at the top. Well, no, I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't think Joey Bosa's racist. 
piece. It is three white boys at the top, though. That's some. Oh, the Giants kept Kayvon Thibodeau. That's fun, I guess. What team are we? I, the reason I'm stalling is because I'm trying to think of what team we are. We're the Buccaneers. I use the Buccaneers so little that I'm not used to looking for them in the <laughs> awards, but Ryan Scarborough for the Cowboys wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Brian McKinney at number two. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to John Farrell for the Commanders. Jadarius Harris at number 10. But let's forget this year ever happened and let's get into the offseason. <laughs> Hopefully there's some good free agents this year. Dog, I'm falling asleep. These Simulation takes so long sometimes. Good lord. Oh, that's a Super Bowl. <laughs> the, the Bills beat the Giants 42 to nothing in what is the first ever Super Bowl shutout? The only reason I think that is the case is because I still for some reason remember when I was watching the Super Bowl when I was like nine years old, maybe 10 years old, the Seahawks in Broncos Super Bowl. I was remembering either them saying or like someone saying that, oh, if this keeps up, this would be the first ever Super Bowl shutout. But eventually the Broncos scored. So I, that's the only reason I remember that. I don't know. I don't even know if that's true. I just think I remember that. But yeah, that's not, that probably wasn't the most fun Super Bowl to watch. Uh, 42 to nothing. <laughs> not great. But who else do we want to re-sign? Is there anyone? Jahan Dotson? I mean, if he was interested, sure, but he's not. Neither is like anyone here. So let's get into free agency. Hopefully there are some players, but I don't know. Ooh, okay. There are a couple players. The problem is that every single team is available, or every single team is interested in Najee Harris and Jalen Johnson because they are the only two like really good players here. Not literally every team, but 20 offers for Najee. And then literally almost every team is interested in Jalen Johnson. But so am I. So we'll at least try to get him. Oh, that's not going to happen. Well, we might as well try. I mean, what's it going to hurt? Okay, well, these are the players we're going to try to sign. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get any of these guys. We might get David Long, but we are tied for the lead with a lot of teams for Jalen Johnson. Same with Leonard Williams. And we are tied for the lead with a couple teams for Jahan Dotson. So that was a loud ass garbage truck, whatever that was. But hopefully that didn't come through on the mic. But David Long is probably the only guy we're going to get here. But let's see if we can sign any of these players. They all sign. Oh. Oh, well, fuck me, I guess. <laughs> We don't get anyone. Jalen Johnston goes to the Raiders. Leonard Williams goes to the Falcons. David Long goes to the Commanders. And Jahan Dotson goes to the Eagles. <sighs> cool. Awesome. Dope. I'm in pain. Put me out of my misery. Ooh, should we sign Kadarius Tony? You know, he would probably be better than what we're working with. Oh, and the, I, whatever. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's get to the draft. How about that? We should have, a, are we going to have two early-ish first round picks? Okay, seven and nine. I wish our pick was one higher, but that's pretty good. We'll take it. But in the draft the Seahawks did end up getting the number one pick we pick at number seven and uh okay well there was one receiver that looked very good unfortunately he is gone Lonnie Burnett actually looks really good too he's a oh he's a physical I thought that said playmaker I don't know why I I don't have any experience taking receivers high in the draft at all so I have no idea if this guy's good honestly <laughs> same with Marquise Jeffrey he actually does look pretty good he's a playmaker with really good speed and good actual receiving ability. I don't know. That's risky though. I have no idea if either of them are good. George Langley is a 6'2", 270 pound speed rusher that isn't that fast and <laughs> has pretty good strength. I He looks really bad. I don't know. I want to take one of these receivers. I am scared. I have no idea which one's better because <laughs> I didn't scout either of them. I know very little about both of them and I feel like what I know about Marquise Jeffrey looks better than what I know about Lonnie Burnett. It's hard to say. I mean, Marquise Jeffries at least a scheme fit. He's a year younger, is faster, is relatively strong. Fuck it. Let's go with Marquise Jeffrey. Hidden Dev, thankfully. Wearing number 81, shout out Antonio Brown. Didn't he, did he wear 81 for the Bucks? I think he did. I don't know. 93 speed, 94 excel. Shout out CTE. God, this is gonna look, do I even want to take this guy? Should I just go with Randy Adams later if he happens to be available in the second? second round. I think we'll do that. Because yeah, Ralph Moore isn't great. I wonder if there's like a crazy looking QB or something. No. Oh, Kevin Kelly looks pretty good. What's his injury? He has bad injury. What's his discipline? He shows good discipline. I have no idea if he's going to have a dev trait. Deontay Cannon looks good. Kind of looks just like a slower version of Kevin Kelly. He has better press than Kevin Kelly, but eh. honestly, <laughs> there aren't that many good looking players here. Ooh, I don't know this guy's pursuit or block shedding, but Kerry Hughes looks pretty good. 
good. Not really a scheme fit though. Kadarius, or no, Lacarius Roth looks very good. I'm not gonna pick him here because I'm not picking linebacker top 10, but he does look good. Ooh, wait, hold on a minute. Adrian Sharp. He has great speed and elite acceleration and elite change of direction. What about Kevin Kelly? Good speed, elite acceleration, good change of direction. <sighs> I think Kelly has better awareness and play rec though. Sharp has better speed and press. There are a lot of first round talent corners. I don't know why I'm so like set on taking a corner. Well, probably because they're the only posi position group that is like consistently good. Honestly, there are a crazy amount of corners in this class though. All of them look very good. All right, we're not taking corner here. We can get that later. What are we gonna do? <laughs> Maybe I should just go with a corner. I don't know. What does Keith Watkins look like this QB? Oh, he had a really good combine. Ooh. Wait, wait, this is this is questionable strategy here, but do we give up on the quarterback we just took and trade him away in favor of Keith Watkins? <laughs> this is so goofy. I don't even know if Keith Watkins is good. We don't have him fully scouted. He's 23, he's a little bit older. I like the MILFs though. I mean, he's pretty good player notes. This is maybe a throwaway pick, but anything we could take here, we could basically just get later in the draft. Let's go with Keith Watkins out of Florida State, just for for fun. Shit. <laughs> I had to try it. He looked good. Whatever. That's fine. All right. Well, Randy Adams is still available. Let's go with him. Again, no idea if he's going to have a dev trait, but he's at least a first to second round talent. He has B injury and shows good discipline. Could have hidden. I don't know. I've given up on trying to figure it out. He looks good. <laughs> probably going to have normal, but let's take him. Yeah, normal dev. You hate to see it. And this is probably the last pick I'm going to show, but let's go with a corner. Do I like Bayless or Redick more? Redick has good speed and solid acceleration. Larry Bayless has good speed and elite acceleration. Okay, I think we're leaning towards him. I wish I knew what Bayless's man coverage was, though. That's the only thing. Plus, Redick has better play rec. Uh, I don't know. No, I think even if Bayless has not great man coverage, I think they'll still be a similar overall. So let's go with Larry Bayless out of Temple. He has hidden dev, thankfully. 92 speed, 95 excel. Okay, he looks pretty good. But I might make one more pick. We'll see. But I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, we just got unlucky with the dev traits. Hold on. We got some pretty good overall players. Marquise Jeffrey, our first pick, is a 79 overall. He is definitely good. Was he better than the other receiver, though? Ooh, Marco Drake. There, This was a crazy receiver class. But, yeah, he was one overall better than Lonnie Burnett. What? Oh, God. No, I didn't mean to click trade. What's Lonnie Burnett's dev trait? Am I gonna be hurt? I feel, I feel like whenever I check what a dev trait is, it's always what I don't want to see. I'm just morbidly curious. What can I say? Yeah, what, what, fuck me, dude. I'm gonna, uh, that's cool. Why does that always happen whenever I check a player's overall, or dev trait? Like, we got the better player. It's just skill issue. I should have perfectly predicted the dev trait. Also, Jeffrey Staten, or Staten, there was an 83 overall guard. Dog, I feel like I have 74 overall guards that look better than him. He's not a very good run blocker at all. That's interesting. All right, whatever. Uh, Keith Watkins isn't bad at all. He's actually a better player right now than our quarterback last year was when we picked. Just unlucky with the dev trait. He has normal dev. He is a good quarterback, just no dev trait. Should I just <laughs> trade him for a top 10 pick next off season? I guess I could right now, but it would be hard to predict what the top 10 picks are going to be. I don't know. Randy Adams also isn't bad, just no dev trait. He's a 75, just unlucky. Larry Bayless is good though, 77 overall, hidden dev. Not a scheme fit because he has 65 man coverage, which yeah, it is as bad as it could have possibly been because of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? JT Buckner, a linebacker I took, is a 74 overall with hidden. He looks good. Sidney Price is a 74. Did he have a dev trait? No, he didn't. And then that was the last pick I took. Or no, I took Lo I took London Cody. Or Landon Cody. He has no dev trait. He's also not very good. Hey, he's fine. <laughs> and then the CPU took a decent linebacker. Does, what's his name? Keelan, Keelan Horn? He does have a dev trait. He looks good. This was definitely a solid draft. Not bad at all, even though we got a little bit unlucky. But let's get into year number two. Just kidding, this is year three. I'm stupid. Oh god, I, this is gonna guarantee that Keith Watkins is gonna win rookie of the year, us trading him away. I'm ready for the pain. I, I've i accepted it, and I can take it. <laughs> we're, ta we're trading Keith Watkins immediately for a first round pick, so no harm, no foul. We could have spent that on something else, but I had to take a chance. It is what it is. But here's a look at the team heading into year three, and we are slowly getting better every year. We started at a 79, last year we were an 81, now we're an 82. I'm surprised we're not
not even better, but we should develop throughout the year. I'm hoping. We have a few rookies start in like Buckner, Bayless, Jeffrey, and I'm hoping Glover will develop now that we have the Kansas City offense. He's already 24. I honestly forgot to start him last year, but it's not like we passed to tight ends much anyways, so I don't think he would have developed too much more. I don't know. I thought I put him in as the starter, but when I checked the stats, it was Zach Ertz. I don't, whatever. I guess not. I don't know. So we'll see how we do this year. I hope we are at least, I don't even want to say better than last year, because I know it's going to happen if I say that, but I hope we're better than last year. <laughs> so let's get to the midseason point and let's... Let's see what the damage is. We'll see. Okay, well, we are definitely better at the midseason point than we were last year. We are four and three. We actually have a winning record again. Now, <laughs> something interesting is we have the best offense and the third worst defense, at least for, you know, points scored and points per game. If we go to the rankings, we're second and 27th, so a little worse on offense, a little better on defense, whatever. Close enough either way. So we're probably gonna, reg I don't even know if we are gonna regret in the second half of the year. We might not, honestly. I think we'll finish somewhere around nine and eight, but I have no idea. We will have to see. Who do we have to resign though? We have Carlton Davis. He's 28 though. There are other corners. We could probably find a rookie that'll be as good as him day one, honestly. Uh, there really isn't anyone here at all, thankfully. It's just all backups. So there is literally nothing for us to do here. Let's see what's going wrong with the defense though, while we are here. Oh, LaVisca Chenault is our number one receiver. That's something. Okay, well, Randy Adams has two sacks. Same with Byron Young, and that leads the team. Not great, not great. BJ Ojulari has zero. I'm giving him traits. I don't care, literally at all. I'm giving him traits. He should not be playing this bad. You're getting discipline, penalty, utilizes power moves, sure. High motor, sure. <laughs> Strips ball, sure, why not? I'm, I'm not dealing with this for another rebuild. Same with George Karloftis. You're getting traits too, buddy. Oh, he already has traits. He just sucks. All right, cool. Well, we have a breakout D lineman, Byron Young. Ooh, I mean, I don't think that's really gonna matter, but I guess we'll see if we can get it. So let's simulate the week and we will see if we can hit that breakout. My guess is no, but we might as well try. Okay, we lose to the Titans as I figured. Oh, but Byron Young does get the dev trait. That's really surprising. Plus 10,000 XP. I mean, he'll still only be like a 74 overall, but I guess that's better than not getting it. I, I don't know, we'll take it. But here we are at the end of year number three. And if you have seen one of my videos before, y'all know why we're here. Before I reveal how we did in year three, if you haven't already, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And if we can get to 1500 likes, I forgot what I promised. I'm not gonna lie, I've been doing that. <laughs> yeah, I straight up forgot 1500 likes and uh, <laughs> I'll do what I promise. I'm stupid. But also, yeah, be sure to subscribe and let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have down below because it'll help me know what y'all wanna see. But we are up to an 85 over we're all now 87 offense, 84 defense. Yeah, even our defense isn't that bad at an 84, like I said. I don't know how it's an 84. It looks like it's an average of like an 80, if I had to guess, because of our D-line, but I mean, I know that's not how the Madden overall system works, but still. But in year number three, we finished 10 and seven, and we made the playoffs. So we did not regress, thankfully. Our run game on offense got a little worse, but we still finished as the number one scoring offense, the number two overall offense. Offense. I'm guessing in terms of yards, that's what that goes off of. Our defense was terrible, still. I don't know what to do about that. That's just a Madden issue, like we have a good overall there, so I don't know. But yeah, on offense, we were very good, and we happen to be playing the Chicago Bears, who we just took down in week 18. So we're playing them in back-to-back -back games. We beat them 34-10 to in week 18. Will the same thing happen here? I don't know. But Brian McKinney, 4,400 yards, 38 touchdowns, 10 picks. Much better in the new offense. Saquon Barkley, almost 1,300 yards, 5.1 per carry, 18 touchdowns. He was still very good, even though he didn't get as many touches. And thankfully, CeeDee Lamb did finish as our number one receiver with 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns. LaVisca Chenault, though, 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Jalen Glover, I thought he would do better, but 900 yards, 7 touchdowns. And Marquise Jeffrey, I wish he got the production that Chenault got, but 700 yards, 7 touchdowns. Still should be up there for Rookie of the Year, just won't win it. And Braxton Jones is still terrible. Uh, Kevin Dotson did really well. Our interior did really well. We'll take it. <laughs> and on defense, what went wrong here? I actually don't know. Bobby Okereke led the team in tackles with 130.
34 tackles for loss, 15 for Ojulari, 13 for Harris and Watts, and then sacks eight and a half for BJ Ojulari. He got a lot better in the second half of the year, finally playing as well as he should. And then three sacks for Jadarius Harris and Byron Young. Yeah, literally nothing outside of BJ Ojulari. And then interceptions, three for Malik Hooker, two for Azul Douglas, and then one, a few players. I don't think we're going to win offensive or defensive rookie of the year, which is surprising considering how many rookies we had playing. Because yeah, even JT Buckner wasn't great. I mean, he had a lot of tackles, but only five tackles for loss, which isn't bad, but only half a sack, no pick. We'll see. But MVP goes to Lamar Jackson, Brian McKinney at number four. I'm surprised the rookie we traded away isn't up here. Of course, Kenny Pickett would be up here because why wouldn't he be? But McKinney was better anyways, so fuck it. Saquon Barkley does win Offensive Player of the Year. Oh, he had a lot of receiving yards, that's why. Yeah, almost 600 receiving yards and five touchdowns. We'll take that. <laughs> Arthur Smith won Coach of the Year. That's something. I never checked this. Were we up here? No, well, we should have been. Mikey McDingle, the GOAT, should have been up here. But Defensive Player of the Year goes to Nick Bosa again. No Buccaneers, shocker. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Trayvon McMillan. For the Falcons, Marquise Jeffrey at number two. <laughs> you hate to see it. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Steve Stevens for the 49ers. A great name. JT Buckner at number five and no other Buccaneers. So unfortunate we couldn't win Rookie of the Year. I wish that our guy would have, especially because he only has star dev like I expect. I'm just really unlucky with draft picks. Like I can pick good overall players. They will not have a dev trait better than star. Literally, I haven't picked one that has better than star dev in this entire rebuild. So I guess it's only been two drafts, but still stupid. <laughs> but anyways, like I said, we are going to be taking on the Chicago Bears in the wild card. And we have a weak link scenario. Couldn't imagine what our weak, weak link is. Certainly not the entire defense, even though it's an 84 overall. Uh, what have we been good at? Uh, nothing? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we can... What team are we playing? We're playing the Bears. So they're probably more run heavy. But Kenny Pickett was up there for MVP, so maybe not. I guess we'll go slow down the run and hope that works. I don't know. I'm not picking what I actually want us to do to win, because I know that's not going to happen. I'm just trying to think what could happen. Yeah, the Bears didn't have a crazy run game. It was below average. So, hey, that's that's doable, assuming we even win. But we have a first of many scenario, our first playoff game of the rebuild. We will go play it cool. Y'all know me. And without further ado, let's simulate this game out and probably lose. Okay, no, we do get a win. Barely. 24 to 20 over the Bears, which that's pretty nice. That could be some decent XP, depending on if we did actually hit the weak link. I, I don't know what this gives. I don't feel like I've ever hit this scenario. It never goes well whenever we get it, but it does finally this time. Uh, apparently our defense didn't do well, but oh, we just don't get anything. Whatever, that's fine. But at least we get some sweet juicy staff points for getting the win. We'll take that. And we have some upgrades. Anything good? No. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to be taking on another famously not great franchise in the Washington Commanders. They do have a better roster, so I'm not going to be too upset if we lose this game. They are 12 and 5. They have Joe Burrow. We do have the better offense, though, an 87 to their 85. They just have a better defense. But let's see if we can somehow win this game. No. At least it was close, but they had the better team, so I am fine with that. But let's get into the offseason in what will be probably the final offseason, and let's see if we can actually fix the rest of the problems with this team, which might be tough, but I will sure try my best. But in the Super Bowl, are those two teams that have never won a Super Bowl? Do the, the Commanders have a Super Bowl? Okay, yeah, they've won it three times. That's kind of what I thought. They did beat the Bills once. That was one of the four in a row that the Bills lost, which I referenced that a lot. I referenced that every time I see them in the Super Bowl. But the Commanders, not the Commanders at the time, won 37 to 20. They also beat the shit out of the Broncos, 42 to 10. And they beat the Dolphins, 27 to 17. Interesting. I didn't know the Broncos lost another Super Bowl that bad. That's tough. Didn't they also get absolutely dominated by the 49ers? Wasn't that the biggest Super Bowl loss ever? Did they did they beat another team that bad? I don't know. But for the players we have to re-sign, obviously it's still the same group, and I'm not interested in any of these players. Actually, Byron Young I'll bring back, but hopefully we can upgrade over him, because he's still only a 74 overall. He does re-sign at least, but eh, I'm good. Or well, no, I'll keep him, but I'm good on starting him, ideally. But that's literally it, so let's get into free agency with a good amount of money to work with. We could even restructure some deals if we want even more, but let's see. Okay, another another not super strong free agent class. It's not surprising, but it's kind of unfortunate. There has not been a single good overall pass rusher this entire rebuild, so that's cool. How are we feeling about Xavier McKinney as the nickel corner? How, how, how are we feeling about
about that. Assuming we can even get the lead for him, which we can't. I mean, we have a tie for the lead of him, but we all know how that will go. There is not a single super good receiver. Daniel Jones was up there for MVP one year and didn't even get past normal dev. Same with Tyler Huntley. I don't know if he was up there for MVP, but I don't know. He did well, at least. How does Devon Hamilton play in this game? Decent. We'll try to sign him, I guess. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be getting him, but we might as well try. I guess we'll also go for Javon Hargrave. Don't know if we'll get him. Do we have a third backup option? Not really. We might as well just go for as many players as we can get. Just because A, we have the money and we don't really have anything else to do with it. And B, in case we don't get some of these players, there will be good backup options. If we don't get them. God, John Michael Schmitz. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure I had him once and he was horrific. So I think I'm good. We'll stick with Juice Scruggs. I don't even think I watched Juice Scruggs like at all before last year's draft. But these are the players we are going to go for. It's going to be Xavier McKinney, Tariq Woolen, Leonard Williams, Javon Hargrave, Devon Hamilton, and Dontavian Wicks. There is a, there's like a good chance we only get Dontavian Wicks here. Like a, a non-zero chance. There's a non-zero chance we don't get anyone here and I cry, which might get views. So I might do that. I don't know. But um, <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting free agent group. It's good. I just don't think we're going to get like any of them, but hey, we might as well see. So let's see who wants to sign. Okay, everybody signed. Oh, we got almost all of them. We got Xavier McKinney, Tariq Woolen, Leonard Williams, Devon Hamilton, and Dontavian Wicks. Was the only one we didn't get Javon Hargrave? Yeah, he went to the St he went back to the Steelers. That's fine. Carl Lawson went back to the Jets. A couple reunions, reunions here, I guess. Derek Carr went back to the Raiders. Interesting. <laughs> Don't know why the Raiders would do that, but okay. Oh, okay. Wait, a few things here that I didn't even think about. So BJ Ojolari got superstar dev, which is very nice. Will he play well next year? I have no idea. He could just go back to how he was playing. He could play how he did this last year. He could play even better. I don't know. But more importantly, Brian McKinney got superstar dev. He only went up to an 82 overall. Why did he get a dev trait? I mean, it doesn't say why, but I'll take it. I wish it would tell you why rather than just like not elaborating. Uh, whatever. We'll take it. Oh, and Glover got star dev. That's kind of cool. Anyone else? I think that was it. But hey, that's pretty good. But let's get to the draft and we will see what position we even want to draft. I don't know. But here we are in the draft. Wow, the <laughs> in my recorder, the <laughs> the Bengals logo looks red. That's an intro. That's so different looking than my actual screen, but it's kind of it's kind of more cool looking on the recording. I don't know. But yeah, the Bengals have the number one pick. Who's their QB? I don't know if I ever saw it. I mean, it might have changed by this point from, you know, who they originally drafted. Oh, they have Sam Howell. Oh yeah, I was gonna maybe trade them our QB and I saw that they had this superstar guy who was a 68 at the time. He's a 72 now, but he is superstar. I was thinking about doing some weird trade package where I was I would send them that QB I took for like a pick in, in Dwight Tucker, but I was like, why would I do that? Tucker would just be a backup too. So whatever, I don't know. Let's get to our pick, which is number 23. And I was thinking about trading up, but like, I don't care enough to. <laughs> the guy probably would have had normal dev, but there was a really good looking receiver. Now that I didn't take him, he'll probably have X factor, but if I took him, he would have had normal. So I don't know. No, he, he would have somehow brought back slow development from the old games. God, that was the worst thing ever. I'm so glad they at least got rid of that. Wow, none of these receivers really look good at all. Rasheem Rice, which brand Rasheem Rice, actually kind of looks similar to Rasheem Rice. What was Rasheem Rice's combine? He ran a four five one. He had a 41 inch vert though and a 10 8 broad jump. Okay, a lot better jumper. This doesn't have 10 yard split. That's fine. And that's all he did. You know what? Similar 40 time. Close enough. He does look pretty good though. I'm not gonna lie. Other than the speed, the speed isn't great. Eric Simmons, a deep threat with 4 5 2 speed. Yeah, I think I'm good. This receiver looks decent, although he has C to F catching. So I, <laughs> I don't know. Joshua Allen. Oh no, we're gonna have three Josh Allens in the NFL now. I'm not ready. He does look pretty decent though. There's also Patrick Adams, but I think Josh, Josh Allen's better. He's elite strength too. Braxton Jones has been terrible. Sure, let's go with Josh Allen. He'll probably have normal dev, but we'll take him. No, he is hidden. Okay, cool. I'm happy with that. We'll, we'll trade Braxton Jones away. He's been awful. We have another first round pick. Oh yeah, the, of course the Colts did well, or that's where we sent the QB, right? Yeah, I think it was, but who do we want to go with here? Terrell Bullocks? <laughs> what are you, British or something? Is that like a British swear word or something? Or like, not a very good word. I don't know. Jason Marsh. Ooh. Ooh, he looks kind of, kind of, kind of goofy. He looks kind of good. He's not very fast, but kind of strong. I wish I knew what his awareness and play rec were, but he's a 
good run defender and he has good power moves. So can't wait for him to be a 71 overall if I want to take him. Ooh, Josh Taylor kind of looks like just a better version of him though. Stronger and a little faster and just better. Okay, we might go with Josh Taylor unless there's someone that looks better somewhere else. I don't know. Ooh, Matthew Pizzo is interesting. Ooh, Damian Alford's pretty good. There are a lot of good D linemen this year. The year where we don't need it as much. Of course, why wouldn't there be? Yeah, let's just take a chance on Jason Marsh. He lacks discipline and has bad injury, so maybe hidden dev? No, I lied. Josh Taylor is the one we're going with. He also has bad injury and lacks discipline. So let's take him. Yeah, I called it. Normal dev, whatever. Fuck you. That's why I don't take three, four defensive ends. They always have normal, except when I don't take them. Whoa, Patrick Adams just went? <laughs> oh, I mean, I guess it's only the, well, it's the very end of the second round, but I'm glad I didn't go with him. It makes me scared about the guy I took because the guy I took, very similar. But let's go with the receiver for our last pick of the rebuild. Which one do I want though? Actually, Donnell Bin looks pretty good. He has terrible deep route, but he has good medium route, which I like. Pretty good speed, elite acceleration, good vertical jump. He's kind of nice. I mean, I don't know, just the release and the deep route are really bad. Dom Dre also looks pretty good. What is Benz's awareness? B to D? Dom Dre has literally the exact same. I don't know. <laughs> this is tough. I'm gonna give the nod to Dom Dre, I think, because I'm racist. No, I don't know. I might go with him. I'm undecided. I do like the medium route running. <sighs> What if we go with both? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully Dre's available next round, but let's go with Dan Danelle Bins. Normal dev, cool, whatever. All right, well, I might make one more pick and I will see y'all for the draft recap. But here's how we did in the draft and this one wasn't great. Um, <laughs> I feel like I draft way worse when, you know, the roster's kind of complete. I'm like, oh, this player looks good and they're not, which is fun. I mean, Josh Taylor and Danelle Bins are good. Just, of course, neither of them have dev trait. At least Joshua Allen does. I'm gonna change his name to Josh. Go by Josh, pussy. Like, drop the last two letters. I don't know. Josh Allen, be number three. So yeah, we'll trade Braxton Jones, which could be a major mistake. Josh Allen could allow 30 sacks. I have no idea, but we might as well try something different. <laughs> and then Josh Taylor, I guess two Joshes with the first two picks. Again, not great. I mean, 75 is decent, but no dev trait, which is kind of an L, but eh, he's something. And then Danelle Bins is something. I, I also took, was Mackie my last pick or did I take Shelton? No, I'm pretty sure Mackie was my last pick and he is not nearly as good as I thought he would be. He had like 36 bench reps. He only has 88 strength. Love this game. That's cool. But yeah, decent draft. It was whatever. It was fine. And let's get into year number four, the final year. All right. Well, this is a trade. Uh, we're trading Braxton Jones and Dontavian Wicks for Zay Flowers and something Randall from the Texans. Uh, you know, I wanted an upgrade at receiver. We don't need Braxton Jones. Jones. We don't really need Dontavian Wicks. He would be like the fifth guy once we add Zay Flowers. Did I call him Zay Jones? I might have. No, I probably said Zay Flowers. I don't know. Either way, we're also adding that Randall guy who's a speed rusher, which fits our scheme. Is he going to play? Probably not, but he is here. So that's something. <laughs> but here we are heading in to the fourth and final year of the rebuild. The team is good. It's not like the best ever. It's not as good as the last time I did this. The last time we did this though, we just started with like a ridiculous team. This one we started is legitimately the worst team in the league. So that's, you know, not a not a great start. But we are a very complete team now. The only thing I'm really worried about is the pass rush still. You know, it, BJ Ojolari was good last year, but he was the only one that was good. Hopefully Leonard Williams can do something in the pass rush game too. But I mean, we'll just have to see, man. I don't know. I also don't know how Josh Allen's gonna do as a rookie, which is a crazy sentence out of context. But yeah, I just, I don't know how he's gonna do. I don't know how a rookie left tackle is gonna do. We'll see. Let's just get straight to the end of your number four and we will see what happens. Okay, well, once again, here we are at the end of your number four. And, you know, before I reveal how we did in your number four, I need something to plug. Uh, go subscribe to my second channel. I don't know. Link in the description. I'm gonna be posting like draft related stuff there. I might do a mock draft. I might start doing more stuff over there. It's hard for me to find the time to because 
rebuilds take me so long, but <laughs> we'll see. I, I'll do something. So yeah, link to my second channel in the, in the description. You'll be one of the first like thousand subscribers, I think. I mean, I plugged it in the last video, so maybe we hit 1k there. I don't know. But here's a look at the team at the end of year four. It's, you know, believe it or not, it's about the same as it was at the beginning of the year. Just a little bit developed. Of, of course, Josh Allen only has star dev because why would he have anything better? But in year number four, we finished 12 and five and we made the playoffs once again. This division was insane. The Falcons went 13 and four. We went 12 and five and the Saints went 10 and seven. Now the Panthers had to be sacrificed for all that to happen, but you know, three 10 plus win teams is kind of crazy. Our offense was very good. Not as good as last year, despite, you know, getting better on paper, which is super fun. Love when that happens all the time. But our defense was better than last year. It still wasn't good though. It was like fine. Oh, we were only 27th for yards allowed apparently. <laughs> That's not great. I don't know what the issue is because the Rams have the exact same playbook, but they were the number eight defense for yards allowed. So I, I give up. I don't know. But Brian McKinney was good. 4,100 yards, almost 4,200, 31 touchdowns, nine picks. Not as good as last year, but still good. Saquon Barkley with almost 1,600 yards, 18 touchdowns, 5.7 per carry. CeeDee Lamb over 1,200 yards, 1,267 with 14 touchdowns, 16 and a half yards per catch. That's crazy. 1,000 yards for Jalen Glover, only three touchdowns, 700 yards for Zay Flowers, 700 yards for Marquise Jeffrey. Oh, okay. Josh Allen was terrible, worse than Braxton Jones. That's kind of tough. Kevin Dotson was also terrible. Our interior was pretty decent though. Bobby Okereke led the team in tackles with 119 tackles for loss, 14 for Leonard Williams, 10 for Devon Hamilton and sacks, seven and a half for BJ Ojolari, five and a half for Josh Taylor as a rookie, but only five for Leonard Williams, five for George Karloftis. I mean, that's more pressure than we've been getting. It's still terrible, but it's better at least. And then interceptions, five for Cam Curl and Xavier McKinney. Thank the Lord for those two or else this would have still been one of the worst defenses in the league. It was but it would have been even worse. <laughs> and then two interceptions for Okereke and Douglas, and then one for Bayless and Helms, who was a backup. But let's see who wins MVP this year. It is Lamar Jackson on the Bills again. Brian McKinney at number 10. I mean, not as good as, what, four last year, I think he was. Also, why do the commanders always get Joe Burrow? I feel like they always get him. That's interesting. <laughs> but NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Justin Herbert, Saquon Barkley at number two, CeeDee Lamb at number five. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Nick Bosa for the third time in a row, Josh or Joey Bosa also up there again. Love the variation of simulation. That's bars. Let's go. Uh, Christian Dickerson wins Offensive Rookie of the Year for the Panthers. Nate Lucas at number eight. Uh, I, I definitely know who that is. Yep. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Chris Green for the Rams. Josh Taylor at number four. Who is our offensive player that was up there? I have no idea who that is. Maybe it was the running back that the CPU draft. Eh, maybe. Okay, yeah, it was. Interesting. I don't know why the CPU picked another power back when we already have Saquon, but whatever. But in the playoffs, we are going to be taking on the 9-8 and eight LA Rams. Now, will we win this game? I have no idea, but there's nothing else for us to go over, so let's just simulate this game. They do have Joey Bosa, which is interesting. I guess we'll see who their QB is, because I don't know. Maybe we've seen who their QB is, but I can't remember. Desmond Ritter, that's right. I remember seeing that when I was going to trade our QB. He's up to a 77. How did he do? He was all right. 26 touchdowns, 10 picks. Nothing crazy, nothing bad. I guess. Last year he was kind of bad though. But let's simulate this game and we will see if we cannot get upset, but we probably will. Okay, we do win, thankfully. 31 to 14, we beat them. We had the better team, better record. I mean, they were at home, but we get the win, thankfully. And now we're going to be taking on the Minnesota Vikings. What is their team looking like? They have the same overall team as us. Okay, they have Max Crosby, that's right. They also have Jonathan Taylor, Amon Ross St. Brown, Kyle. This is a good team. Their QB's Anthony Richardson. Okay. Has he done well? Eh, that's a lot of interceptions, but he's done all right. But yeah, that, that's a lot of pick. But they did well enough to go 11-6 and six and obviously win a playoff game. The Jets went 14-3 and three with Patrick Mahomes now. That's something. But let's simulate this game, and we will see if we can beat the Vikings. If not, that's fair. We both have an 86 overall team, but let's see what happens. Okay, well, I don't think we necessarily deserve to get smoked, but we lose 38-24, to 24, ending our our rebuild. But this was a fun one. This one was insanely harder than the last one. Is that a sentence? I don't know, but the starting team here was the worst in the league and we made it one of the best. So I would call that a success either way. But if you enjoyed today's video, again, be sure to drop a like, be sure to subscribe. On screen now is probably another video that YouTube thinks you would enjoy. So feel free to watch that. But with that, I will see y'all again in the next
next video. Goodbye.